Welcome to this introduction to Tableau tutorial provided by the Georgia Tech Library's Data Viz Lab. In this video, we are going to create three data visualization projects to give you a feel for how Tableau works and what it's capable of doing. Before we get started with Tableau, let's go ahead and download the data that we will be working with, which can be found on the Data Viz Lab's GitHub site. The URL is github.com slash gt library data visualization. Once you get to the site, under popular repositories, click on Tableau Introduction Workshop. Then click the green button labeled code, download the zip file, open it and extract all. Select show extracted files when complete. Open the Tableau Introduction Workshop Master folder, then open the data folder. These are the three Excel files we'll be working with, which we'll come back to in a moment. Let's begin with a quick overview of Tableau, and then we'll get started on our projects. There are three versions of Tableau available to the Georgia Tech community. Tableau Public, Tableau Desktop, and Tableau Server. Tableau Public is free and works with most file types. However, it only connects to Google Sheets and Web Data Connector, and you cannot save files locally. Tableau Desktop is not free, but the library does have a paid license and it is available in the library's DataViz lab. Tableau also offers a one-year free education license for this version, which can be found at tableau.com backslash academic. Tableau Desktop supports more file types than Tableau Public and connects to most major databases. Finally, there is Tableau Server, which is also not free but available at Georgia Tech. Tableau Server can host your visualization so that you can share your project with a specific audience without releasing sensitive or confidential data. If you wish to publish your visualization, Tableau Server provides a professional host URL. Please contact us if you have a user case for Tableau Server. For this tutorial, we will be using Tableau Public. We'll begin by looking at the Tableau Public interface. When we first open Tableau, we are taken to the Start page where we have three options. Connect, which allows us to connect to a data set, for example an Excel file. Open, which allows us to open a project that we've already saved to Tableau Public. And Discover, which allows us to view other users' projects on Tableau Public, as well as how-to videos and other resources. Today we are going to be using the Connect option. Before starting on a new project, it's important to look at the data you're going to be working with and get an idea of what you'd like to do with it. For our first project, we're going to be working with the Excel file Federal County Dataset Population Estimates. Let's take a look at the data. This workbook has two sheets. The first, Population Estimates 2010 to 2018, contains our data which includes several demographic variables at county level, such as birth and death rates of different years, and it's organized by FIPS code, which identifies unique geographic areas. Here we are working with county level FIPS codes. The second sheet, Variable Descriptions, is exactly that, descriptions of the variables in the first sheet. For our visualization project, we're going to look at one variable, the birth rates for 2016 we want to see how those births were distributed at the county level across the nation. To do so, we're going to create a heat map, which is a map that uses darker and lighter colors to demonstrate, respectively, higher and lower values. So, for example, a geographic location that has higher birth rates will be colored darker, while a location that has fewer birth rates will be colored lighter. Let's begin. On the left-hand side, under Connect, Click on Microsoft Excel and navigate to your file directory to select the file Federal County Dataset Population Estimates. Double click to load the file. Now our data is connected and we are taken to our first book. Under Connections, we see our Excel file listed. Below that, under Sheets, we see our two sheets. Because we are dealing with two sheets, you'll notice that nothing initially appears over here in the canvas. We need to tell Tableau which sheet we want to see. 
If we drag and drop variable descriptions into the canvas, we get this table below. Because that sheet doesn't really contain data, but rather just a list of definitions, this isn't very useful. If we click the back arrow, that undoes our last action and removes the sheet. This time, let's drag and drop the Population Estimates 2010-2018 sheet into the canvas. Now we have our data laid out in a table, like in Excel. At the bottom of the page, if we click where it says Sheet 1, we can start to work with the data and create our heat map. First, on the left hand side, in the data pane, you'll notice we have all the variables listed. For our data, we see three different icons next to the variables. An ABC icon, a globe icon, and a number sign icon. The ABC icon means Tableau thinks this column contains text values, which is called strings in Tableau. The globe refers to geographic data, and the number sign refers to numeric values. If you look a little closer, you'll notice that some of the icons are blue and some are green. Blue icons indicate that the data is discrete, and green icons indicate that the data is continuous. It's important to note that Tableau may not automatically treat your data the way you want it to. For instance, let's look at area name. Because of the ABC icon, we know that Tableau is treating this field as a text value. And if we drag and drop area name to the right, all we get is a text listing of the counties. Remember, we want to create a map, so we need to tell Tableau that we want to treat area name as geographic data and not as a text value. First, let's undo that last step and get rid of the table. Next, hover over area name, click the down arrow, go to geographic role, and since we're working with counties, click county. Now we see that the ABC icon next to area name has changed to the globe icon indicating that Tableau now recognizes this field as a geographic area. Now let's drag and drop area name again into sheet 1, and now we have a map. Now you'll notice that we still have a lot of white, unidentified space on our map. This is because many county names are not unique. For example, I am currently in Fulton County, Georgia, and in our data set, there are several Fulton counties listed. Tableau only recognizes the first one, and all the other Fulton counties will be ignored as it thinks they are all the same. To fix this, we will drag state over to marks underneath area name. The action helps form a unique combination of county and state, so the Tableau knows that Fulton, Georgia is different from Fulton, Indiana and Fulton, Illinois. Now all the counties are accounted for across the nation. Next, we want our map to be colored according to a statistical variable which we said earlier would be birth rates 2016. To do that, we will drag and drop births 2016 to the color mark. Now our map is colored blue, but you'll notice there's not a lot of variation in color. There are a few spots that are darker, but most of the map is one color. This is because by default, Tableau treats numbers as continuous values, which means as long as there is not a huge gap among values, it will treat all values as a long continuous spectrum and it will not split them. We're going to change our data from continuous to discrete. To do that, in the Marks section, hover over the sum births 2016, click on the down arrow and select discrete. Now all of our counties are different colors, and if we look over on the right, there is a legend that lists all the different values in their corresponding colors. This still isn't very useful because the colors are randomly assigned to the values. So instead of having all these different colors, we're going to assign a single color palette and see what happens. In the Mark section, click on Colors, then Edit Colors. From the drop-down menu under Select Color Palette, let's choose Blue. Then click Assign Palette, and then OK. Now we have a blue map, and some areas are darker, and some are lighter. The darker areas are counties with higher birth rates in 2016, and the lighter counties had lower birth rates. I'm going to do one last thing to improve the aesthetics of the map, and that is to get rid of the borders. This is useful because some of the counties are so small that the border effectively covers up the color. To get rid of the borders, click on Color, and next to Border, select None from the drop-down menu. 
Now we have completed our heat map showing the birth rates for 2016. Now we're ready to start on our second project, a box and whisker plot. First we need to add our second data source. Click on this cylinder with a plus sign in the menu bar to add a new data source. Then click Microsoft Excel, and this time we're going to work with the file LeBron James Stats. You'll notice this brings us back to our data source page. Let's take a quick look at our data. See we have 30 games listed over the span of 3 years, 10 games each year. And we're given the number of points LeBron scored in each game. A box and whisker plot, also called a box plot, shows us the statistical distribution of a data set. The minimum, the maximum, the median, the first quartile, which is the median of the lower half of the data set, and the third quartile, which is the median of the upper half of the data set. By creating a box and whisker plot for each of the three years, we can get an idea of how we performed in these games. To get started, at the bottom of the page, click the New Worksheet tab to the right of Sheet 1. Notice in the top left corner we now have two data sources, the LeBron James data source we just added, and our population estimates data source from the heat map. Now let's take a quick moment to look at columns and rows. Columns will display our data from left to right, and rows will display our data from top to bottom. Let's drag years into the columns section. Remember when we looked at the data, it only contains years 2016 through 2018. Now we see on the sheet it scales years 2015 through 2019. This is because Tableau is treating our values as a continuous spectrum. By default, it will add a value at the beginning and the end. To fix this, let's change the data from continuous to discrete. To do that, hover over year, click the down arrow, and select discrete. Now we have only 2016 through 2018 displayed from left to right. Next we want to see how the points were distributed across these three years. Drag points into the ABC area of the canvas. By default, Tableau has aggregated the points for each year, but we want to see how many points LeBron scored in each game, not just each season. So we need to turn off the aggregate measures. To do this, we click Analysis at the top and deselect Aggregate Measures. Now we see how many points were scored in each of the 10 games for all three seasons. Now we're ready to create our box and whisker plot. Click on Show Me in the top right corner and select the box and whisker plot. From our box and whisker plot, we can see that 2018 was his most consistent year. Now let's begin our third project, a tree map. First let's look at our data. Click on the new data source and choose Excel, then select the food density consumption file. First let's take a look at the data. We have a food consumption table, which tells us how much food was consumed, where it was consumed, what was consumed, and by whom. Specifically for this data set, we can draw insights from different perspectives. For instance, what kind of food are people eating and where are they eating? Or what kind of food are adults and children eating? Or where are people eating most, etc. For our exercise, we want to see where people are consuming their food and what they are consuming. First, click on the New Sheet icon to bring up a new sheet. Tableau should use the Excel file we just chose, but if not, just click it. I'm going to start by looking at where people are eating, for example at home, at fast food restaurants, and then we're going to look at what they are eating there. Drag and drop where and put it in columns. That gives us a listing from left to right of the different places. Next, we want to see how often they are eating at each place. Drag consumption onto the ABC frame and drop it when the area turns into a black box. Now we can see that most of the consumption is fast food, followed by restaurant and other, and so on. One way to visualize this data hierarchy is with a tree map. A tree map displays the whole data set as one large box and breaks down the different variables into smaller boxes whose size is determined by their weight. So in our tree map, the fast food would have the biggest box and so on. Click show me, then click on this box. Now we have our tree map. 
Notice, in addition to the different box sizes, the boxes are colored differently, with the darker boxes representing the larger values and the lighter boxes representing the smaller values. For our visualization, we want to see the data broken down even further so that we can see what people are eating at each of the places. Let's drag and drop type to marks under where. At this point, our tree map is pretty messy. It's hard to see exactly what it's telling us. Rather than having it colored by consumption, let's color it by where the food is being eaten. So drag and drop where onto color. Now it's easy to see each of the different locations because they're colored differently. And then within each location, we can see what is being consumed there. Now let's take a look at tooltip, which allows us to edit what we see in the white box when we hover over the tree map. If you click on tooltip, it shows us our three variables, type, where, and consumption. The grayed out text is connected to our data, so we don't want to change that text. But the other text that isn't grayed out, we can edit. I'm going to create a sentence by editing and rearranging the fields. Now click OK. When we hover over our tree map, we see the sentences that we created with our data. Don't forget to give your visualization a name by clicking down here. And now this visualization is complete. This concludes our introduction to Tableau tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Shimi Me, the library's data visualization librarian, at shimi.me at library.gatech.edu. Thank you for joining us.